Hello, this is Nisreen from Nisreen's Art World. In this podcast, I will share my thoughts about different art forms, such as films, books, paintings, performing art, etc. Hello, this is Nisreen. Welcome to the third episode of my podcast. Lovely to speak to you again. Today, I'd love to talk about a theme that's very close to my heart. Artists, mental health and social media. The definition of artist here is anyone who expresses themselves through any art forms, no matter whether financial profit is involved. I'm not a believer that you're only an artist, only if you make money of your art. In my case, I share my belly dance performances and paintings or drawings online. For now, I do this purely for self-expression. I also consider this podcast a tiny piece of art. In terms of the impact of social media on mental health in general, I found an insightful article titled Social Media Use and Mental Health, a Global Analysis. By the National Library of Medicine, the world's largest medical library in Maryland. I will read one passage from the article. Quote, using Prisma guidelines on PubMed and Google Scholar, a literature search from January 2010 to June 2020 was conducted to identify studies addressing the relationship between social media sites and mental health. Of the 39 studies identified, 20 were included in the meta-analysis. Results indicate that, while social media can create a sense of community for the user, excessive and increased use of social media, particularly among those who are vulnerable, is correlated with depression and other mental health disorders. Unquote. While the definition of vulnerability varies, of course, what I can certainly say Sharing your creation on the internet also makes you experience certain level of vulnerability. I couldn't find any data specifically about artists' mental health and social media. There are quite a few blog posts from the artists' perspective, though, that honestly talk about their struggles. Their courage inspired me to talk about my own perspectives on this topic. First, what makes social media a source of the sense of community? It's equality and accessibility. No matter where you are, who you are, you can express your artistry online. If you try to exhibit your paintings in a physical gallery, for example, you usually need to pay the rental fee for the venue. And of course, you must be physically capable to prepare the exhibit, or at least submit your artwork. And you don't have a voice on other media platforms, such as TV, newspapers, magazines, unless you already have established your reputation or connections. On the internet, on the other hand, you can just post your work for free by yourself. And you can post online while you're at home, even from your sickbed. And when it comes to accessibility, you can also reach out to anyone, anywhere online. I also have fortunate experiences in that sense. I received lovely comments on my art posts from the director and producer of my favourite film, Yay Ballet, in Delhi, and from Sophia Ellis-Bexter, a pop star in England as well. 
As mentioned in episode one, I connected with fan communities of the film RRR2. I can't think of any other means like social media to make such broad connections. If you have an exhibit in the real world, you will only have local people to view your art, unless you're a highly acclaimed artist already. Then why could social media be psychologically harmful? I will talk about five reasons why I think social media can be particularly toxic for artists. Later, I will share the tips for softening the emotional toll. Let's get right into it. Reason one, social media enforces competition. The number of likes, comments, even views are instantly visible. You may notice a number of visitors or sales in person too, particularly if you're a career artist. But what's unique about social media is that the numbers are usually public. Once you're on social media, you are automatically put in the competitive system. Especially for underage creators, this could be truly heartbreaking because what they need is often not harsh criticism, but nurturing. Reason two, social media has an anti-fine art bias. This may sound like overgeneralization, but bear with me. First, what is fine art? Is it different to commercial art? Fine art is typically visual art such as paintings or sculptures that are created for the sake of its creation. Fine art aims to express personal or cultural perspectives in a unique way. It often has a subtle and abstract nature. It has room for interpretation and emotional experience. In contrast, commercial art is created with a clearer commercial purpose. Package design, posters, book illustrations, for example, are usually called commercial art. They aim to convey a message efficiently to a specific group of people. Both art styles are important and valuable. And of course, it's often hard to draw the line between the two. The medieval European portraits were often painted for clients upon commission, and so were commercial products. But those pieces in the museums nowadays are considered fine art. The point is though, that fine art is not valued for its efficient communication. You need to take time to reflect on the piece to really appreciate it. This aspect of fine art is inherently anti-social media. On social media, efficient and instant engagement is essential to gain views. You may say the same thing about dance videos online. Not many people take 30 minutes to appreciate a traditional dance routine. They only see 30 seconds long in Instagram reels. What is scary about social media for traditional or fine artists especially is that the more you try to grow views, the more you could alienate yourself from your core principles. Reason three, social media consumes your time. People say you need to post multiple times of every day, otherwise the algorithms leave you behind. Instagram in particular has this tendency nowadays. Algorithms also tend to pick up reels, slash videos much more than the images. My question is, though, how are we supposed to find the time to get engrossed in artwork if we upload the videos every day? 
don't get me wrong, I truly respect those who make it happen. To me, at least, it doesn't seem to be very sustainable. Also, if you try to engage with your followers, you may end up thinking about social media 24-7, which could be exhausting. Reason 4. Social media discourages you from evolving. Algorithms love consistency. For example, rather than posting about dogs one day and films other days, you need to only post about dogs all the way through to get boosted. So obviously, the way I talk about various topics here and on my social media is a bad policy if you want attention. Also, as much as I appreciate fan art communities, in my case of films, I am aware of expectation for fan art creators especially to stick to the same subject. I don't buy that, honestly. For nurturing creativity, trying out different themes, memes and styles is extremely important. Look how much Picasso evolved through his life. Finally, reason five. Social media is basically an anonymous space. If you show your painting or dancing to someone in person, you almost certainly get a reaction. They may not like it, they may criticize it, they may just ignore it, but at least you see them. Audiences in any case generally tend to be warm. On the internet though, sometimes all you receive for your work is a dead silence. You don't even know if anyone saw your piece. Maybe they have. It's marked as seen, but you don't know. All you see is those icons, not actual people. It may feel like talking into the void. Especially after spending days of furnishing your craft on your own and finally finishing it, this sense of loneliness may deeply affect you. These are the five reasons why I believe social media could be toxic for creators. Now, how can we make it better for ourselves if we don't plan to delete all the social media accounts? I will suggest three methods that worked for me. Method one, find more opportunities to share art in person. In terms of visual art, since I joined a local art guild and exhibit, I've started feeling less worried about social media. I suppose it's because social media became my secondary platform, not my primary one. And the sense of belonging to the local community really helped me. Fortunately, these local activ activities are all very affordable. Also, performing bay dancing in local events is a great way to feel connected to people in real life for me. By having the more sociable art form to express myself, I can cope with the solitude I have when working on visual art. Method two, set clear goals and priorities for using social media. You could write down three top goals. For example, in my case, the top motivation in social media usage is to express my creativity. The second priority is to improve my language and communication skills. The third priority is to build the genuine sense of community. Once I recognized those priorities, I started feeling less stressed about algorithms and numbers. It would be great, of course, if I gain more viewers, but I don't try to do that by compromising my higher priorities. On the contrary, 
If your top priority is to increase business engagement, you might need to learn how to use algorithms. You may seek professional support for marketing. Either way, becoming conscious about your intention will help you focus on your goals, not the emotions along the way. Finally, method three. Try to reach out in more personal ways. Some may use newsletters or membership online salons, video chats or simply emails to their online followers or community members. These methods are slower and more personal. We could focus more on individual connections and conversations even online rather than with faceless audiences. I have a video call session with my art friends in Japan about once a month. It helps me keep motivations for sharing my art online. I also realized one heartfelt comment matters much more than any number of likes to me. These are the main three suggestions I'd make. And of course, taking good night's sleep and sunlight is important too. Limiting the time on social media is also an idea. Again, social media can give us a great benefit if we can work around the negatives. What did you think? I'd be delighted if you write a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And of course, you're more than welcome to let me know your thoughts about this topic from the contact form in the description. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye for now.